Long ago, in Ireland, a young woman was out for an evening stroll, alone. Autumn was approaching, and the evenings were drawing in. There was a slight breeze, and the night was cold, but not too cold. In fact, young Alice enjoyed the cool air. During her walk, darkness came swiftly, and she decided to head back. As she turned toward home, she heard a frightful, low, moaning sound. She was startled. Hello? Oh, no. No, 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 no. A banshee. I know it. The sound continued, and she ran. When she reached home, out of breath, she slammed the door behind her and called for her mother. Mother! Mother! Mrs O'Connor ran down the stairs to her daughter. Alice, what is it, dear? Whatever is the matter? Alice sobbed. It comes for me. Death. Death comes for me. I heard it, Mother. I heard it. Alice. Alice, calm down. You're babbling. Now breathe. What did you hear? Now, Alice attempted to calm her breathing. The banshee. Oh, Alice. Her mother sighed. These superstitions. You must pay no mind. Whatever you heard could well have been an animal out there in those woods. I heard it, Mother. The low moan of a banshee. The wind through the trees. Her mother interrupted. No. A warning. This is the first night. And on the third, I will die. You'll see... Tomorrow you'll hear it too. Alice did not sleep much that night. The next day, she was sat alone in her bedroom. The door opened, and a figure filled the entrance. Your mother tells me you were being hysterical last night. Her father spoke to her. Well, mother is right, but not without good reason. She says you think you were dying. Well, what's the matter? Are you ill? Do we need to call a doctor? Alice shook her head in irritation. You don't get it, do you? Nothing can stop it. I've been marked. Her father exhaled. (sighs) I don't have time for this, Alice. I don't want to hear any more of this nonsense. He turned and walked away. Just wait until tonight, father. You'll hear it too. She called after him. Not so hysterical now. More resigned to her fate. That evening, the night came in early again. At the dinner table, Alice had barely touched her food. Her mother, concerned, asked, How are you feeling, Alice? I don't have much of an appetite, unsurprisingly. Well, none of us have heard any peculiar sounds tonight, have we? Her father slammed on the table. I don't want to hear any more talk of spooks or spectre tonight. Am I clear? Alice, eat your food. I'm not hungry. Then go to your room. Fine. Alice removed herself from the dinner table and went back upstairs, alone, to her bedroom. Her parents continued to eat, in silence. Not ten minutes later, the howling started. Alice called down from the top of the stairs. Do you hear it? Do you believe me now? And she returned to her bedroom, slamming the door behind her, shutting herself in. The following day, her father spoke to her again, this time with more concern for his daughter. Now that noise last night could have been anything, but you're obviously rattled, so tonight we'll stay together, downstairs in the drawing room. Me... You and your mother. And I'll make sure nothing happens to you. And once this evening is through, we can put this whole silly business behind us. I mean, you can't just drop dead out of nowhere now, can you? Alice merely nodded. Deep down, she knew there was no escape. The evening came, and, as promised, they were gathered together in the drawing room. The room was silent until 
The shrieking noise filled the room. What the bloody hell? Mr. O'Connor exclaimed. Do you believe me now, Father? Do you believe me now? I am to die. Alice pleaded. There must be some kind of explanation. The windows shattered. Even now you question it. A vase of flowers shattered. I don't understand. Her mother was sobbing. Alice fled. Alice, Alice, wait! Her father took off after her, followed by her mother. Intent on shutting herself back in her bedroom, she ran up the stairs where she tripped, struck her head on the large corner banister, and fell backwards, back down the stairs. She hit the bottom, and her neck was broken. Silence filled the house. Its duty complete, the Banshee left the family in peace.